Dear Shalom viewers, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You are most welcome to this program of Renewal Fire. As we are in the presence of God, let us invoke God the Holy Spirit in our minds, in our hearts. Let's make a small prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. You are here in our midst. You are with us and you have promised to us you will never reject us. Jesus, as we are in your presence, you may send your Holy Spirit upon us as we are going to listen the word of God. The word of God may transform our lives. The word of God may heal us. The word of God may give us new life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brother, my dear sister, how many of you would like to live a joyful life? How many of you would like to wish to live a joyful life? I am damn sure me and you, all of us, we would like to live a joyful life. If you would like to live a joyful life, there are three things. First and foremost, you must examine your conscience and think about your relationship between you and your God. How are you ready to forgive your God? Are you ready to reconcile with Him? If you are ready to reconcile with your God, there is no doubt God will fill you with His joy and peace in your hearts. I don't think it is a big task to reconcile with God. Why? Because God is not doing any harm to you. God is ever ready to forgive you. God is ever ready to forget your past. God is compassionate and He is loving. And it is easy to reconcile with the God. Maybe we have been complaining why God is not listening to my cry. And that's all. Sometimes we are having little complaint against to God, but we are ready to reconcile with Him and to forgive Him. Again, if you would like to be a joyful human, by, human being, you may examine your relationship with yourself. Are you ready to forgive yourself? Are you ready to reconcile with yourself? This is the second step. One day, a young boy came and he told me, Father, please look at my eyes. When I looked at his eyes, he was having big eyes, but beautiful. And I asked him, your eyes seems to be a little bigger, but they are beautiful. But he told me, Father, that may be your belief, but I do hate my eyes and I am complaining and because of these two big, big eyes, I do hate myself. I don't like big eyes. I love small eyes. That was his problem. And he told me, Father, you, do you know one day when I looked at the mirror, when I could see my eyes, they are big, 
I hit on the mirror and I broke the mirror. Sometimes we may complain. Why my eyes are big or small? Why my ears are very small? Why I do behave like this? Why I do hate my brother, my sister? Why I am getting angry with others? You don't want to be get angry, but you are getting angry with others. You want to love everyone, but you are struggling to love others. Sometimes you don't like your behavior, you don't like your character, or you may be thinking you had been committing some sins. Maybe you are thinking about your past sins, because of that you are living with a lot of guilt because of your past sins. Maybe you do hate yourself. My dear brother, my dear sister, if you would like to be a joyful human being, again you need to forgive yourself, to reconcile with yourself and accept yourself. And third, if you would like to be a joyful human being, if you, if you would like to be a joyful person to reconcile with your brother, with your sister, rather to reconcile with your enemies, it is a task, it is a real task to reconcile with your enemies. How many of you said sorry in your life? Only strong could say sorry to others. Only the strong person could say sorry to others. Pope Francis, he reminds us, if you would like to live a happy life, you must know two words. The first one is sorry and the second one is thank you. And these two words, it can build your family. These two words, it can bring joy and happiness in your personal life. How many of you have forgiven a person even though hasn't asked you sorry? Maybe you have succeeded. That means you are a strong person. I do work in Africa. I am working in Uganda. Uganda is one of the East African country. And I have been working more than 22 years in Africa. Right now, I am in, in a retreat center. People, they used to come to us with their problems. One of the greatest problem people, they do suffer is rejection. That is the spiritual problem they do face. I remember one day, a girl, she came for spiritual sharing and she told me that, Father, I was rejected by my own mom. Do you know, Father, why she rejected me? Because right now I am jobless. I don't have a job. I am a jobless person. I have been working and I had a very good job. Couple of months back, I lost my job because I don't have a job, I don't have income, my mother rejects me. Then she told me, Father, do you know how much I do hate her now? Because there is a reason for, for that hatred. 
one day my mother bought some fish and she prepared the fish and she served the fish for herself and my younger sister then she made a comment you are not permitted to eat this fish why because you don't have a job you are not supporting my family and you are a burden for my family father when i was 15 years old since 15 years old i have been supporting my mom only few months back i lost my job because i don't have any income now my mother she is telling i am a burden to her my dear brother my dear sister this particular girl she was shedding tears because she was rejected by her own mother and she was struggling to forgive her she was struggling to reconcile with her i told her do you know how much your lord loves you he will never reject you he is your god even though your mother forgets you your god he will never ever forget you i gave her some word of god to read and she was reading the word of god and she attended a retreat she was filled with the god's love within her and again she came back and she told me father when i was filled with god's love in my heart there is a place for my mom i love her forgiveness brings many blessings in our life forgiveness is 11 a letter word elizabeth max a great writer said forgiveness is a four letter words that is love forgiveness is one of the ingredients of love if you have love you have forgiveness and there is a story the story is like this there was an old priest one day this priest was trying to save a scorpion from the flooding river scorpion bites the old priest three times and a, and a devotee asked why are you trying to save a biting scorpion leave it off the old priest said why the little scorpion can't let go his character of biting me how can i let go of my character of helping it some people their character may be always to bite others always to annoy others but some others their character is always to love others my dear brother my dear sister if you would like to be a joyful person we need a character to love and to forgive others when you do it you will become like your heavenly father and he will teach you more lessons about love and this is a challenge for me and for you if you would like to be a joyful human being to reconcile 
with your God, to reconcile with yourself and to reconcile with your enemies. And when you do it, heaven will come upon you. You are going to become the real children of your heavenly father. My dear brother, my dear sister, sometimes we are ready to forgive. But it is very difficult to forget. Many people, they used to come and they say, Father, I am ready to forgive, but don't, please don't tell me to forget. I must say to remember to forgive. What does it mean to remember to forgive? Why you are struggling to forget some people, maybe they hurt you, maybe they have offended you, maybe they have spoken ill of you, maybe they have spoiled your name. Why are you struggling to forget that person? Why can't you forget them? To remember to forgive. What does it mean to remember to forgive? You know, God is bringing that person in your mind, in your memory. And God is insisting you, my dear daughter, my dear son, maybe you have been praying for this person. Maybe you tried your level best to forgive her, forgive him. That is well and good. But why now I am bringing this person in front of you because you need to pray more. Through your prayer, this person must transform his life, her life. You know, remembering, remembering them or remembering the past bad things they have done to you, it is, it is not a sin. Whenever it comes back to you, whenever it hits in your mind, again you may remember God warns, God warns from you to pray for that person. Keep on praying for that person until he transforms, until she transforms her life. Because of that, you know, that person is coming in your mind and in your thought. So, no need of, no need of struggling to forget them, but to pray for them. And as you have been, as you are praying for them, they will change their life. And God wants through you, through you, that, that person must change the way of their life. One day, a religious sister, she came for spiritual sharing. And she told me that, Father, whenever I get a new appointment, and if I go to a particular community, there will be few sisters, they will be waiting for me. And they will be my enemies, my opponents. Father, why I do get new enemies in the new community? And I did not have an answer for this question, but I told her, sister, please kindly pray and I am also praying for your issue. Let us see why you are getting new enemies in the new community. And I have been really praying for this particular sister and one day she came back. And 
I have been praying for her. I got a word of God from the Bible. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. This is what we read. An unbelieving husband will be made holy by his believing wife. An unbelieving wife will be made holy by her believing husband. This is what I got the word of God for this particular sister. I told her, sister, this is what, this is what the answer for your question. The sister was looking at me and she told me, father, this is for the married people. Am I right, father? I told her, sister, it is for you. And this is what God spoke to me. Now, right now, you told me you are going to a new community. How many sisters are there? She told me, Father, there are five sisters. And I am, the, I am going to be the local superior of that house. And I told you, what is your profession? She told me, I am a nurse. I told her, you know, your first mission is your community. And of course, you are, as you are a religious nun, you are also a nurse, of course, you are, you are going to do your, your work there. But before you are going to that particular community, there will be enemies and you need to pray for them. You have to prepare yourself and you have to prepare for all the four sisters. But your brothers and sisters, this particular sister went to that convent as she told me, three of them, they were against her. And uh, always they were fighting with her. She came back, Father, I told you, you see, there are three of them, always they are fighting with me. I got now new enemies. I don't know, Father, what to do. I told her, keep on praying for them. Bless them and pray for them. You may do this prayer, Lord Jesus, have mercy on my fellow sisters, come Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, come Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this sister was keep on praying this prayer. And you know that community, it has got changed through her prayer. And finally, all those three of them, they were against her. They became the best friends of her. And they did many things in that particular community, in that society. And you know, finally she got the transfer from that community. And all these three sisters wrote a letter to their general superior. We love our local superior. Don't transfer her from this community. And the sister was there again one more year and they lived a very happy community life. Do you know why that sister was appointed in that particular community? Because she has to be sanctified through her fellow sisters and they must be saved through her prayer. God has a plan. Why? you do get enemies in your life. Because through your enemies, you must be saved and they must be sanctified. And finally, all of us, we must inherit the kingdom of God. That is what the purpose of God and it will be done in our life. If you are, if you are ready, if you are ready to listen his voice, let us close our eyes for a moment and let us bring all our enemies. You may remember their face. You may remember some of the words they have uttered. Let us pray for them. As we do pray for our enemies, heaven will come and we will experience the heavenly bliss within us. Lord, we thank you for your word. 
as we have been listening the word of God, we are sure we want, we would like to live a joyful life. In order to live a joyful life, we need to reconcile with God, with ourselves and with our enemies. Lord Jesus, give us this grace to love you and also to love our brothers and sisters so that we will be a joyful people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.